it's hard because like I have bigger hips and stuff and not everybody understands what that is if you're not from different cultures or things like that and so that's definitely been like as a curvaceous woman you kind of have to like shrink your curves which I have worked so hard to do the opposite of that right Mm. so that's been kind of hard and you just kind of have to like shove it down your throat and be like Mm. okay I'm I'm here to be professional and I'm not and welcome back to filter Get it. Hey, what's up? It is your girl, Sadi. You guys know the man to the left of me. What's up, y'all? It's Dash. Let's get it. And welcome back to Filter What. Filter What Podcast. We got a special guest today. Yes, we do. I've been looking forward to this episode. Mm-hmm. The lovely Maggie. She is a fashion model, a poet, mm-hmm. an actress, mm-hmm. and a singer. Talk that talk. All around talented person. Okay. How you feeling? Good. I'm feeling great. Thanks thank for you, having thank me. You, thank you. Pleasure, to, pleasure yeah. to have you. Yes, yes. How are you? How you feeling? Good. I'm good. I'm nervous, but I'm good. It'll Beautiful. be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing to be nervous about. At all. We don't bite. We're not going to ask any No, I never thought that. So. Okay. <laughs> so, first and foremost, um, you're a fashion model, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, how long have you been modeling for? Um, I would say the short story of that is four years, but the long story of that is like 13 years. 13 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what made you want to get into modeling? Um, the pandemic actually in like a big way. I think I always wanted to, but I think being like a plus size person, I was like, I don't know if, you know, it just Mm -hmm. wasn't something we grew up in like Tyra's era. Like, okay. The plus models were like really... Okay. Not plus in right. our standards now. Right. Um, but I, people have always told me that like I did well on camera and like I'm an entertainer, I'm a performer, mm-hmm. and um, the pandemic really was like I had lost a job and I was like, well, what can I do? And I ended up in front of the camera. It was pretty crazy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Check you out. So we know each other uh, for some time now. I think we met on Instagram and just supported <laughs> each other and it just grew from there. And then just watch you all this time thus far. I really like your work. Thank you. But has there been like a pivotal moment for you in modeling? Like what turned everything around? Was it like a negative or positive experience? Um, I think what has turned it around for me is like having like a sense of purpose behind what I'm doing rather than just doing it for like a cash flow or like things like that. But I think modeling, yes, you are selling a product and yes, you are like f- fashion is an artistic, beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, it's showing that you can be yourself and still be someone to look up to. Like right. that, that's my ultimate goal in right. it is that I want other people to know that it's okay to be themselves and right. that it's something that should be shown off and cared for. Yeah. I love that. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So being that, you know, of course, being in the fashion industry, the transition that it has taken from back then compared to now, everyone, you know, it's more um, appreciated now for all different shapes and sizes. So how do you feel about like, you know, the whole transition and everything? I think that we still have a way to go, but I think actually seeing like the diversity that has come a lot, like that's good. We still need to push harder for that. But I'm glad that we're going in the right direction is, mm-hmm. is how I feel about it. Yeah. And I think it's just important for everyone to realize that we can't take a step backwards. Like, right. That's, that's yeah, what I would say. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Okay, with that being said, have you ever had any experience or been in a situation where you felt like like you've personally been body shamed or anything like that? Oh, yeah, like definitely. Mm-hmm. Like, um, <laughs> like on set? Yes, sometimes. Okay. Um, it's hard because like I have bigger hips and stuff, and not everybody understands what that is if you're yeah. not from different cultures or things like right. that. And so that's definitely been like, as a curvaceous woman, you kind of have to like shrink your curves, which I have worked so hard to do the opposite of that. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's been kind of hard, and you just kind of have to like shove it down your throat and be like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm. I'm here to be professional and I'm not going to fight anybody. But right. in the back of my head, I'm like, I want to fight you so bad. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. I completely understand. And then, like, um, you know, Instagram, like, is a big place for people to 
have their own internalized hatred of themselves and spew right. it at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just don't respond anymore because I know that it's better to just not give people what they want. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I agree. Have you ever let it like get to you? And if so, oh, yeah. how do you um, overcome that? So a couple things. And now I think that I try to like out logic it. I'm like, I, the instinct is always you get angry right first mm-hmm. if somebody of comes course. at you. Yeah. Because you're like, I want to fight them. Of course. But I take a deep breath. I try to look at the other side. If I'm really mad, I'll like screenshot or I'll text someone that I love that cares about me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, how should I respond to this? And they're like, let me fight them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me fight them. <laughs> No, I really don't fight people. Um, I don't think that I do. Um, and then I just kind of realized that it's not worth it because my I have worked so hard to have, like, good energy. Yeah. And I know that if I put out good energy, the people that are receptive to me and understand me as a confident person mm-hmm. and not a cocky person exactly. are the people that I want surrounding me. Right. So they just don't need to be in my circle. And not Hello. that's a hard thing to yes, learn yes, is that yes. not everybody needs to be in your circle. Yeah. It's true. But I feel like once you do learn that, mm-hmm. then you like you really start to get it. It really starts to make yeah. sense. So yep, yeah, that's for sure. Sure. Okay. So one thing that me and you have in common knowing you thus far is music. We both come from music, music backgrounds. So with you making the transition into modeling, do you still feel like create whole as a creative? That's a really good question. Um, No, because, well, in in a creative aspect in that I'm creating something, because that's what creatives want, is we want Mm -hmm. to, like, produce some sort of humanistic thing that other people can grasp onto or some sort of catharsis that other people can grab onto. That's -hmm. that's what I want as an artist, at least. Um, But music because that was like my first love like I started music when I was like two years old like I'm okay it's always been like a big thing in my brain it's what I went to school for um I think because I was like in such a structured part of the musical world I wasn't able to be as creative as I wanted Mm -hmm. and now knowing that there are other outlets to that I'm exploring that a little bit more but I think I still need that musical aspect of myself because it is such a big part of who I am Mm -hmm. right yeah. Okay. Would you say being in the fashion industry and, you know, being a singer as well, mm-hmm. is it more difficult to be, be being a model or an artist? That is a great... I feel like they're very similar, actually, yeah. in the d- level of difficulty, only in that you can't choose in, in like... Because I'm a singer. Yeah. I can't decide if somebody likes my voice. I can't decide if somebody likes the way I mm-hmm. look, if I'm modeling. Like, that is an objective opinion. Right. So I don't really have any control over that. All yeah. I can control is how I'm feeling about me through my voice, mm-hmm. through my music, or through my modeling and through my body. Right. So it's both worlds have the, my creativity doesn't depend upon me, really. It depends on how other people perceive it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of hard. I like that. But yeah. Yeah. You have to like really let go. Yeah. That and just true. trust. And that's yeah. hard. It's hard to right. let go. You're absolutely right. We're like yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. I like, I like the way you put yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you had to choose to be at the zenith of either or, if it was modeling or like your music career, <laughs> just like, oh, God. which one would you lean into? I would say music, but only because I feel like it can reach so many more people. Music, yeah. Like if you, you can see an image and it can really touch your heart and soul, but I don't, unless it's like, like Nipsey's standing here, like you walk in and see that every day, that does speak to your heart and soul because he is someone that has profound knowledge or had, still has it. Mm-hmm. Think, yeah. Whatever you believe. Um, but I think songs are like timeless. Like I, yeah. There's still songs from before, like, time that, like, we know. Like, Mm -hmm. so that kind of way that you can change people's hearts with, like, Mm -hmm. just like that that. is pretty amazing. Okay. Beautiful. So you also act. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
Where did that all come in? And <laughs> yes. So it's it's funny because I was really shy growing up. Okay. Um, and singing and acting actually were the thing that got me kind of out of the box because my okay. friend was like, you should audition for this musical. And I had just done like piano and singing in choirs and like things like that. So you're kind of like in the background, mm -hmm. not really center stage. Right. And I was like, this is crazy. I don't want to do this. But I, for whatever reason, because if you don't push yourself to do things, you never learn anything right. new. That's true. That's true. Um, I did it. And then I was like, there's this whole other side of me that allows me to be creative in being a different character, being bringing words that people have written to mm -hmm. life, which is the same with songs, too. Mm -hmm. Um and that was really cool for me. And yeah. the expression actually has been the biggest part to help with modeling in mm -hmm. my experience with acting. That's good. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. yeah. I have. And yeah. it really makes a huge difference. I feel like when you mm -hmm. take like these acting classes and everything, because in the modeling industry, you know, you're on set and you're taking, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing photo shoots or whatever, and you have to be this whole other person mm -hmm. you know you have to pretend you gotta you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, be gotta on, do it yeah exactly like, yeah so it's a whole other like persona you have to take on so definitely i feel like they both are like in sync and one mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay all right one thing that i really like about you and appreciate about you is that i feel like you're culturally in tune so growing up from where you grew up yeah. um how was that and, and like what makes you view the world the way you view it so it's kind of funny um because i did grow up in a very like homogenous like one type of people mm -hmm. culture like idaho is very white um but i'm mixed mm -hmm. and so there was always like i was i felt like i was kind of fighting myself all the time because i knew i didn't really fit in but i had to so you know that's where the acting came into yeah. play like i kind of acclimated myself into this culture that never really felt like it was a part of mine. And then that helped me realize like how important culture is. And I, and then I took a class in college actually that was called race, culture, and ethnicity. Okay. okay. But I've always loved hip hop and rap and stuff too. So that, yeah. that was yeah. a big thing. Yeah. But also like as a child, I was very like aware of things. Like I remember being in like the store and I was like, where's a black Ken doll? And yeah. like, oh, that's good. Uh, like, it, yeah. like, and yeah. I made my mom go to like six different stores. Wow. Cause I was like this, this, cause I had like a black uh, Barbie and I was like, she needs a man. Yeah. But like, obviously yeah. like interracial couples, like that's right, fine. Exactly. But, um, but I was very like, I was like, that's not okay. That this yeah. doesn't exist. Wow. Right. Um, so then when I took that class in college, I was, they talked about kind of, um, like the structures of oppression that are in our society and I was like I even I wrote like this essay on how I know that um, cosmetologists only learn how to do white hair and I don't even know how I knew that I it's just like something that I've always been like yeah. super hyper aware of and I think part of that is my empathy because I am very empathetic and mm -hmm. I always am like looking at people and like thinking like how would I feel if I was in their shoes right exactly um and so then when I finally made the move to the East Coast and was like finally immersed in like the diversity that I had kind of been craving my entire life, I was like, this is, this feels right. Mm -hmm. And it can be hard. Like it's, it's very hard to be in a diverse society. Like that's, that's proven. But I think that the challenge is worth it because if we can all learn to love and accept each other, then that, then we can all grow in the same monetary way and things will be equalized and they just haven't been for thousands of years yeah. mm -hmm. and it's frustrating yeah oh definitely it, it is yeah i agree 100 yeah, so i don't know yeah. if that answers the question yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um coming where you come from uh how did your like parents or your support system take you getting into like modeling mm -hmm. and singing and being in the whole entertainment industry? Um, so singing was like pretty easy for my parents to grasp, even though my dad um, is a scientist and my mom oh, nice. is a nurse. So they're very not yeah. like, I'm a kind of the black sheep of the family. Right. I was like like the artsy kid. I would like be outside a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they, my dad 
he's like a nerd. He like loves fantasy and Mm -hmm. Mm sci-fi and all of that. Mm -hmm. And he played trombone and piano growing up. So he was like, you can explore this musical side of you. And my brothers actually were the ones that were like, my my younger brother, Nick, has always Mm -hmm. been like, Maggie, you have a gift and like you need to like pursue this. Right. So because they really believe in that aspect of me, which is kind of sad that I didn't at the time. Oh, now that I'm thinking about, but I, they kind of just let me pursue music. And then when modeling, and there was like a little bit because my okay. my parents are my dad's really Catholic okay. and my mom is like whatever but <laughs> she's very she's like pretty prudy <laughs> like <laughs> I'll like show up in a crop top and she's like <laughs> where's the rest of it <laughs> right right she's like do you really want to wear that and that and a lot of my body shame came from that yeah, too growing yeah, okay. up so, but that's okay I like have moved on from that yeah. um, but. I, they're both kind of just like, you're an adult, you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't show them lingerie photos. I don't show them swim photos. Like they just don't know that (laughs) part of my life. (laughs) (laughs) I probably won't show them this podcast. Like, No, No, I can definitely relate for certain. Um, My mom, you know, my family, I come from a Muslim background. So being that I didn't never really fully felt comfortable showing them like, the lingerie, the bathing suit type of photo shoots, I would show them more so of me like fully clothed <laughs> or, yeah, like the or, or something like, or something like decent, but I know that she <laughs> will be like, um, what, look, what what is this? You know, where's the rest mm-hmm. of it? So I completely understand. Well, and we're like yeah. adults, but we're still like, no, right. I don't want to get in trouble with mom. Exactly. Because like, yeah, so that, I mean, you're still their baby at the end of the exactly. day. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. All right, so... With everything that you do, what is uh, the thing that you want to leave behind for people following in your footsteps? Um, I just want people to look at people as human beings and not as what they look like. I, and I want them to treat each other the way that they want to be treated. Like right. that's what I, that's what I try to live by, and that's what I think. If more of us lived by, mm-hmm. we would be better as a society, Absolutely. as a world. Yeah. I agree. So that's what I want. Okay. okay. And what advice would you give to anyone that's trying to like, you know, be in the fashion industry, be a singer, an actress? Um, it's hard. And you really have to believe in yourself. And there will be times when you want to give up and delete everything mm. and go live in the woods yep. and not <laughs> talk to anybody. Mm. Yeah. But then you have to remember that we're all here for a reason, at least I think so. Yeah. And that you matter. Definitely. And that your dreams matter and the time is now. Yeah. I love that. I love that. All right. mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So now we got a game for you. Yeah. Fun, fun <laughs> game. It's just basically a one word answer. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna spit out some questions. The first thing that comes to mind, one word, shoot. It's not a right or wrong answer. The so first it thing that comes to <laughs> mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Okay. Favorite thing about New York? The culture. Okay. Favorite thing about where you grew up? The nature. Name one song to sing at karaoke night. Zombie by the Cranberry. Okay. <laughs> it really brings down the mood. <laughs> but it's, it's fine. I mean, it's okay. Tomorrow, it's, it's okay. Okay. Name a celebrity crush. Oh no. Um <laughs> Ryan Gosling right now. I've been, okay. I've been into him. Okay. Okay. The strongest thing I don't about know, Pedro Pascal. He's been okay. Pedro Pascal. Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> Change it's okay. Okay. Strongest thing about you. My mind. Okay. Weakest thing about you. My heart. If you could time travel to any year, which year would it be? Um night. 2000 and no I have no idea now let's live here now I don't okay. know okay <laughs> uh, favorite food Mexican okay okay all right <laughs> <laughs> that was hard, really. Yeah. It's hard for me to like think up. Oh, oh okay. yeah. No, it was good. It was good. It was good. Oh, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thank you so much. Story. Nah, you really appreciate it. I yes. really appreciate you coming. We was really looking forward yes, to you yes, yes. being on the show. I love everything that you've done, and I'm encourage you to keep going. And thank you, even when things get hard. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you. So, where can people follow you? 
Um, I'm on Instagram, Scorpio Singer, and that's really it because I haven't built up my TikTok. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <No problem. laughs> okay. Well, there you have it. Thank you guys for tuning into Filter What. We're out of here. Appreciate y'all. See y'all at the next video. <laughs> <laughs>